Welcome to Mr. Q's Geometry class. Today we're going to look at triangles and some different properties of the triangles, and then we're going to look into how to apply these in situations, problem solving, and real world examples in class. So the first thing I want to do is classify different triangles by both their sides and their angles. To classify a triangle by its side, we have to look at the lengths of the sides of the triangle. The first triangle we have here is a scalene triangle, and a scalene triangle is one that has no common lengths of their sides. So all of the sides of this triangle are different in length. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two lengths that are equal. Now, if you've ever taken a chemistry class, you may have seen this prefix iso, and iso just means the same, so it's a good way to memorize it. Equilateral triangles. An equilateral triangle has three sides that are equal in length. So it really just has the word in it. Equal and lateral meaning side. So equal length sides. We then go to classify triangles by the angles of the triangle. We talk about the angles inside. And the first one, this may sound pretty easy and basic to you because you've seen all of these terms before. The first one's an acute triangle meaning all of the angles inside of this triangle are less than 90 degrees. They're acute angles. Second, we have a right triangle, which indicates that one of the angles of the triangle is a right angle. The third triangle, an obtuse triangle, has one obtuse angle inside of it. Now, it's important to note that only one of these angles can be obtuse. If you had two, you couldn't have a triangle, and we'll get into that later on. And lastly, the equal angular triangle has equal angles. All of these angles are equal in measure inside of that triangle. Now, you got to get comfortable talking about the different kinds of angles of a triangle. So what I've done here is I've drawn a triangle, but I've extended their sides so that you could see that extended line. And this is a good way to visualize the two different angles that we have indicated here. The first one is the interior angles of a triangle. Interior angles are inside or interior of the triangle. So these red arrows here indicate that interior angle. Now the exterior angles are a little more difficult to visualize, which is why I did extend those lines. As you can see, these blue arrows represent the exterior angles. And those angles are the angles that lie next to an interior, um, but are outside of the triangle. Don't get this confused with this angle here. That is not an exterior angle. This would indicate the vertical angle to the inside or interior angle indicated here by the red arrow. So the exterior ones are only the ones next to interior angles. This brings up the triangle sum theorem. And this is an important theorem that we're going to use very often, so get comfortable with it. Uh, and what the triangle sum theorem tells us is that the measures of all of the angles inside or interior angles of the triangle add up to equal 180 degrees. So this green box here represents the measure of angle A. This red box, the measure of angle B, and measure of angle C is this purple box. Adding up all three of these angles equals 180 degrees, and we will use those in calculations coming up. An extension of the triangle sum theorem, as well as linear pairs, which you learned earlier on, is the exterior angle theorem. And this theorem talks about an exterior angle and its corresponding opposite interior angles. So you've learned in the past that 180 degrees represents the measure of a linear pair. So we have a linear pair here and here, these two angles. And we know that all of the angles of the triangle, the interior angles, add to 180. So if we take 180 and chop off this angle here, we're left with these two angles, which should be the same measure of this third angle, angle 1. So the exterior angle theorem states that 
the measure of angle 1, this exterior angle, is equal to the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, these two opposite interior angles. Now we're going to take a look at some problem-solving techniques with this. For this first problem, we have to find the measure of the exterior angle. Now when we're talking about the exterior angle, remember we're talking about this angle here that has the 5x plus 55 degrees. To find this measure, we have to figure out some kind of relation here. And what we can recognize is that we have two remote angles that are interior of this triangle, and opposite of the third angle is the exterior angle. So what we can use here is the exterior angles theorem. To use this theorem, we can set 5x plus 55 equal to the sum of the two interior angles, so 2x plus 88. Now we have to carry out the necessary algebra to isolate and solve for x. Subtract 55 from both sides and subtract 2x from both sides. Now we have that 2x minus 2x cancels and equals 0, and the 55 cancels and equals 0 as well. 5x minus 2x leaves us with 3x, and 88 minus 55 is 33. Now we have 3x is equal to 33. To solve for x, divide both sides by the coefficient in front of the variable, 3. This gives us x is equal to 11. Now careful, at this point make sure you finish the problem. A lot of students will see that we've solved for x. Well, the question actually asks for the measure of the exterior angle. So we have to plug this back in. 5 times 11 plus 55 is going to equal the measure of our angle. 5 times 11, of course, is 55 plus 55 gives us 110 degrees. Here's a pretty simple problem. We have three angles of this triangle that are interior angles and we're trying to find the value for x. So we have the triangle sum theorem which tells us that all of these angles added together should equal 180 degrees. Hence 2x plus 3x plus 50 is going to equal 180 degrees. Adding like terms, we have 5x plus 50 is equal to 180. Now we're trying to solve for x, so isolate by subtracting 50 from both sides. And we're left with 130 is equal to 5x. Last, divide by that coefficient, 130 divided by 5, you're left with x is equal to 26. In this problem, we're asked to find the value of x and y, given a couple properties in this diagram. The first thing to notice is that we have parallel lines. So these little tick marks here indicate that these two lines are actually parallel. Now, if you can see it, they're actually cut by this transversal here. So you can recognize that 118 degrees and x degrees are actually corresponding angles. From previous lessons, we know that corresponding angles are congruent, so they should equal one another. Therefore, x must be equal to 118 degrees. Now we're left with two angles, y and 22 degrees, which are both interior angles opposite of this exterior angle here. So what we can use is the exterior angles theorem. This tells us that x must be equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles, y plus 22. We already found x, so we have 118 is equal to y plus 22. So to solve for y, we just subtract 22 from both sides, and we get that y is equal to 96. And we're done. For this last example, I want to point out that again, we have parallel lines. Both this above and below line are parallel as indicated by those little arrows. So these parallel lines are cut by this transversal, as well as by another second transversal. 
So we can look at different ways to relate these angles. And initially I noticed that 53 and x are on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're also inside of these parallel lines. So we have that 53 degrees and x degrees are alternate interior angles, and they must be congruent. x must be equal to 53 degrees. From there, there's a couple different ways we can solve for y, and I'm going to show you one way here. I recognize to start that 53 degrees and y degrees are both interior to this triangle. 85 degrees is then the exterior remote angles of those two. So what we can say here using the exterior angles theorem is that 85 is equal to the sum of the two interior remote angles, y plus 53. So to solve this, we subtract 53 from both sides, and we get that y is equal to 32. Now that's not the only way to solve this, and I do encourage other ways, uh, but this is just one attempt.